object is to crush your fist to a man's jaw, causing the brain to cascade up against the skull and explode. People always say, ah, you're a dreamer. But it's all right. At least you're dreaming of something that you know in your heart you can attain. We always believed. We had to believe because that's what we were doing. If we didn't believe in each other and if I didn't believe in David, then we're wasting our time. Nobody has seen the best of you yet. They see you in great fights, but they haven't seen the best you got. Everybody gonna have to look out now. One punch knockout power. All fighters want to have it. Very few in the world ever have it. He has it. David Tua will become the biggest pay-per-view fighter the boxing has ever seen. Here comes David Tua, winging away left, right, offense in trouble, and down he goes. David Tua's gonna go out there in every round and do what he does best, throw punches. Lennox <laughs> Lewis gets hurt, David Tua will seize the opportunity <laughs> and take care of Mr. Lewis. Who's it? A kid from from Samoa that once used to run around butt naked. A kid from South Auckland, New Zealand, would be fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world. We tried our very best to enjoy whatever we had, even though we had nothing. It wasn't a good starting for the tours. <laughs> Sorry for him, even me too, you know. That's how too much pressure. Mm. Uh, spend a lot of time with my family and uh, it's time to go to work. Dave's been preparing for this fight for eight years, as Kip would say. This is his destiny, as he would say. <laughs> I'll be just looking forward to getting on the phone and getting out of all people. <laughs> when you talk about Las Vegas back home in New Zealand, everybody uh, talks about the strip and the lights and the strippers, the hookers, the drink, the, the wide open sin city that it is. But Las Vegas is the place for boxing. It's the wild, wild west, though. This is where the money is. This is the road to your world domination and heavyweight division. <laughs> He's got great punching power, tremendous chin. He's smart inside the ring. But what I love about the whole total package is, is his viciousness when that bell rings and his charisma and charming self outside the ring. Those are ingredients that are very hard to find. In every sport, you'll find an athlete that seems to raise the public awareness of that sport. In the 60s and 70s, you think of Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicklaus for golf. Now you think of Tiger Woods. David Tua is bringing that excitement to boxing. Who said a boy from South Oakland cannot attract the attention like he, he received today? I mean, hey, <laughs> he could have be extra special, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
People love a puncher. You want to see a legitimate knockout artist, a guy that goes there to knock your head off. And David does that. Nice left hook and down he goes. Something up is down. He may not be able to recover. That was a good left hook. He is the puncher right now in the heavyweight division. And because he's comparable in size and, and in skills to Tyson, and he, because he's a good guy, I think the public here is really falling for him. Okay, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Looking at me, buddy. I mean, they're going to be David to a dolls. They'll be David to a Pokemon. This whole tour man thing is sensational. The guys that came up with this, it's brilliant. I think the lower angle. The, lower angle to the, the lower marketing angle. of David to a outside the ring. David has no okay. idea what he's installed for. And cut. And we cut. <laughs> I'm not going to move. I'm trusting you, buddy. <laughs> OK, I think we got it. Knockout punch. Cut. We cut. <laughs> Nice. The media here in America just love what they have. They know that we take care of business on the 11th of November at the Mandalay Bay. We have a huge box office sensation in David Tua. Here's always the key, because all of this stuff is bullshit, okay? We know it. Very seldom can you ever go into a fight where you feel very confident that your guy is going to win, okay? You're the real goods. Like I told you, just looking at your old fights where you're a bad mother, okay? And you could, you could have taken any heavyweight back then. You're much better, mature. That's the difference. Oh, Up, leading up to the fight, that is one of my most, most favorite thing to do. David, the Tua Man Tua! The fireworks and fucking bombs going off, and I'm like, oh, jeez, what the heck am I doing here, you know? Lennox Lewis! It was nice to, to see Lennox, you know, it almost made me cry. He looked beautiful, Lennox. I've got a little gift for Brother Lennox. Just part of my culture, and uh, I'd love for you to have it. Uh, it's not a peace offering, it's a declaration of war. Thank you very, very much, and God bless you all. He gave you some beads or whatever, you know, some Samoan warrior beads declaring war. Uh, what did you think about that, 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 that exchange? That was, you know, a nice gesture, but I wouldn't put them around my neck because, I, you know, it could be some voodoo thing or, or whatever, you never know. <laughs> Everybody that sparks Lennox Lewis has always tried to get to Lennox Lewis. So I, I just see David Dewar trying to do the same thing. Everybody that's tried has always come up short, always failed. I don't see him being successful in that. I'm terrified as I'm sitting here. <laughs> My hair's sticking up. <laughs> You guys face off at one another, please. Steer him down, what for? I'll be staring at his hairdo. I've talked to Lewis about Tua, and he would ask me, what do you think of this guy? I mean, he's awful little, isn't he? With a big question mark, and I said, but he can hit your chin. And if he does that, he's capable of knocking out anybody. And he just kind of looked and, uh, you know, nodded his head, uh, you know, like he'd be aware of that. Look at the power behind these punches, and Daniels is down. The way he looks is sort of the way he fights, you know, big solid and, uh, you know, big punching. When you think of a David Tua fight, you're thinking of action. I don't think you're going to see anybody getting cute in there for 12 rounds. Lennox! 
see, Lennox Lewis thinks that he's the greatest fighter that ever lived, and David Tua is just another opponent. Now, he may respect his left hand, but he doesn't respect him like he needs to respect him. Greg keeps on going right hand. Grant missing with the right hand. Lewis trying to get something going with the jab. Grant has been the score. I'm none of the guys that have gone to the night of the fight where they froze, where they didn't adapt. I'm not intimidated by Lennox. I'm not intimidated by all. Cities with touring, only, only just New York. New York. Oh man. We're taking phone calls for David Tua tonight. If you have a question, go ahead and give us a call here. Thank you very much. Take it easy, man. Good luck, man. All right, man. Thank you. Just get, this is just trying to look up how not tall the buildings are. I'm really going to show this for them. I thank you for the opportunity. Uh, David Tua joins us in the studio tonight. Welcome to New York One. How do you like the city? Big city. Definitely the place you don't want to get lost on. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Tell me the worst thing you've ever done. The worst thing you've ever done? Yeah. Uh, stealing uh, uh, candy from a blind kid. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Johnny! <laughs> New York City! New York, New York, New York. Filthy, dirty city. <laughs> The tour man's term, somebody got to pay for this. Got to pay. And that's what you gotta do, but that's why you gotta push this guy faster than he wanna go at the beginning. So you keep pushing this guy, making him miss, but you gotta bang him. You gotta bang this guy as you're making him miss. See, and then it's so easy, it could be so easy for you. They, nobody have seen the best of you yet. They ain't seen the best what you have. They seen you in great fights, but they haven't seen the best you got. And this is the fight that's gonna show the best that you are. I think David is a lot better than people give him credit for. And a lot of fighters that David has fought have, done, have all did the same thing. They got ahead and thought, oh, I can coast. But as they coast, good they get stronger and stronger. That's then in the end, David knocks them up. Remember we got on the board, speed plus power. Speed on the outside, power on the inside. Whenever you stop, you know he, he know you come in with something big. Then he want to get out of there. I don't hang out with him. If it gets too close, nothing will get done. You know, it, it'll get to a point where uh, he doesn't want to say anything just in case he, I might get mad or I might get offended by it. But with him being a trainer, he doesn't mean anything by it. He's just doing his job. You know, David wants to get in there and he wants to show people that he's the best heavyweight in the world. 
In order to be the best heavyweight in the world, you have to knock out, not just beat, one of the best heavyweights in the world, and that's Lennox Lewis. And I'll tell you one thing in this fight, if I'm Lennox Lewis's people, the last thing I want to do is engage with Tua. We know Tua can bang, so why do you want to engage with him? The smart way, jab, 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 right hand and get out of there. And David, on the other hand, a lot of movement, a lot of movement, so this guy's jab is missing. He's got to fight the fight inside. Lewis, if he's smart, fights it on the outside. Otherwise, it's just a power explosion, and either guy can win. Boxing is the most pure form of sport. Yeah, the promoters try to manipulate the ratings, but that's their job. If Chrysler Corporation uh, is entertaining the Hertz rental car agency and they go out and spend a million dollars on fishing trips, nobody says anything. But if a boxing promoter uh, spends $100,000 to get his fighter moved into position for a title shot, whoa, what do we got here? This is crooked. This is a racket. This is wrong. It's not wrong. It's the genuine way that business is done in boxing. Two KOs. Makes it 10-0 with nine knockouts since his only defeat to Ika Bayabuchi in 1997. A sport where there's so much money involved, there is always going to be that evil, ugly element. That's always going to be there. You know, we're talking, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Now, you can't get that close to that much gold without there being an element of corruption. Kevin Berry has been a very integral part of the David Tua story since day one when he saw him at the Olympics. Kevin has helped guide the way. Kevin has helped shield him from the more dubious aspects of boxing. Uh, there isn't a cleaner fighter in the world than David Tua, and there isn't a cleaner manager than Kevin Barry. Kevin's been the key factor for, for David. I'm doing something that I love. It's been a good marriage. And he's been a good wife, so. Yeah, he loves saying that. The only time you're going to see Kevin get upset is when someone does something wrong. He likes to know everyone's following through on everything. That's a good man. Believe me, I'm the first one. If somebody falls behind and doesn't do their job, they're gone. Because it's a reflection on me um, as the manager of the camp. But, you know, we're a family. We're a tight unit. We all have a job to do. We know what our jobs are. David is the boss. We're all here for him. It is all about him. It's only a matter of time before the pressure gets to the tour, man. Oh. And he folds. Yeah, like that. David's my number one priority. Oh. That was just off the table. That <laughs> Saturday night, the guys might go out. I stay with David. We'll be sitting in there, we'll, we'll hang out, we'll watch videos, we'll sing karaoke. All the guys are out having a good time. It doesn't bother me. I'm there for the big guy. Oh, he yeah. knows that. Yeah. Yeah. Mace, the high chief. <coughs> high chief gonna take over. High chief. I really want to follow David's footsteps. So if David's gonna be a champion, I want to be a champion too. <laughs> To have the high chief here in camp, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing where it almost feels like at times I'm, I'm at home, you know, with him, with speaking the, the same uh, lingo at, the time, at times and uh, playing the, the Simon music in the gym. He's part of my family. He's family to me. Huh? To a man! <laughs> <laughs> David has made it uh, no secret from the start. Boxing is my business. My family is my personal life. They don't go hand in hand. They're as different as chalk and cheese. <laughs> the perfect example of that is the first time we came out and showed the people of New Zealand David's two-year-old son. <laughs> All right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, frustration is a thing that's always there in the gym. The gym's where you make your mistakes and, where, and also where you correct your mistakes. So, you know, there were things today that didn't really go as well. I'm talking about digging down the trenches, mate. Come on. Uh, he did some good things, and he did other oh, things oh, oh. that, that uh, you know, David was frustrated about. That's the way you dig down in the trenches. That's what I'm talking about. Digging down in the trenches when you have to. Under a lot of pressure. Under a lot of pressure. And pressure is, is not a good thing for anybody to have. Because it can destroy you. Completely, it can destroy you. You have to 
to dig deep in yourself and say, I can do this. I really can do this. Hey David, I got something special I want to show you here. I was in the Vatican last week. I, I'll give it to you when you get ready, but that's uh, from the Holy Father, the Pope. I was blessed in the Vatican last week. I was in oh, Rome. Thanks. I brought that back to you. And then I know that you're a religious guy. I also brought you back a miraculous medal. That's oh, for good. Those just for good luck. You know, just throw that in your training bag or throw that someplace so you have that with you the night of the fight. Okay? David is such a personable guy. If you become heavyweight champion, you immediately become the most famous on the planet. And to be able to handle that is difficult. Lennox Lewis has done the handling it, he's dead. But he's one of the... There you go. Inspiring anywhere I get hit. My forearms, uh, my shoulders. It hurts, man, it hurts. But mentally, you have to, you have to be prepared to handle it. Okay. You're all right, then. There's a fairly big height difference. But, you know, you can see when Dave does put himself in the position and he lands that left hook, he shakes the big guy up. And things, moves like that are really encouraging for me and for Ronnie. You know, he's doing a lot of things right and he's doing other things not quite so good. But the, the good thing is he's putting himself in the position to unload the shots. It's just once he's there at the moment, he's not firing them in as many numbers as what we're hoping he will do. When he does get close to Lewis, he's got the fire punches because if he doesn't, Lewis is going to be throwing them back at him. Punch right there. Punch right there. Come on, come on. Get a punch with you there. If it comes down to a point where I'm showing the effects, the other guy's going to jump on me. He's not going to wait. I mean, once you give it away, you lose. Once you give it away, you lose. Once you give in, you lose. Hey, that's the tour man I know, you right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Maybe a bruised rib at best. Mm. That's boxing, you know, no worries. Why don't you guys get ready and we're going to get you over get that choice, okay? Do you have a pen so we can write down some mud? Uh, Listen first if you take some the deep breaths through your mouth. Keep the phase, mate. That's it. Okay. Keep going, please. A couple more. Sounds good. Yeah, I saw it happen. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe, uh oh, he got hit by a body shot and got hurt. But then the way he grimaced and when you know he was trying to move and he couldn't, I knew it was the rear then. Thanks, Chris. It's definitely not what we were looking for four weeks out from the fight. We were looking to spar 10 rounds today. It was our first 10 rounder. The whole camp was up for it. Dave was up for it. We had all the sparring partners gloved up. These things happen. You've got to roll with the punches. 
I was numb. I, we all were. I mean, the, the mood in the camp was, oh no, this, this just can't be happening. Everything's going so well. And then we picked this injury up. Uh, we were shattered. We, we really were shattered. How they look? Uh, good pictures. Dr. Schwartz will read them. Okay, thank you very much. Now he's got hurt in the upper area here, so that's why I'd be most concerned. Good on you, too. <laughs> you passed that one. <laughs> <laughs> this area is where he got hurt. That looks fine to me. Fantastic. These are the lower ribs, so I don't expect a problem. There's a big guy looking down. That's what we said? Yeah. Because of the significance of this, let me just double check, okay? From here, yeah. No, no running on that. Of the little of the little out of this, Ken, but we'll work something out. It's just down there, mate. Now for the big one, Junior Bear. The big one. Yeah, Junior Bear. Junior Bear is the big one. It's frustrating. No, no. I'm on holiday. <laughs> I'm on holiday, man. It's a couple of days and I'll be back to work again. Actually, I faked it all. I just want to take time to... <laughs> don't, tell, don't tell nobody, though. Billy Bear, Billy Bear. Come here, Billy Bear. Hey, uh, we got uh, we got a reporter down here. Oh, he must be coming down. Hey, you have to get Junior Bear. I'm gonna get Junior Bear. Junior Bear. Are you coming down? Yeah, I'm coming. Okay. Hurry. Pay for this, we know that. <laughs> and it didn't even succeed. <laughs> <laughs> you threw two of me and none of them even opened. They didn't even break. <laughs> what does that tell you? Huh? I don't think we had enough. Rock. If it had been rock, they would have exploded. <laughs> it was that plan, they just bounced <laughs> off it. That means you're soft, man. Yeah. Everybody else is <laughs> high, you're soft. I'm the hardest plug in this can. Yeah. Yeah. You're just soft. soft, man. We have to stay very positive around Dave. We have to let them know that we're very supportive. You know, like I, I feel very relieved at the moment. I wouldn't say I was totally comfortable because I still got to get David in the ring and I've got to see him getting whacked around the stomach area. There was no way that I wanted David Tua fighting the biggest fight of his career against a very good champion, anything less than 100%. That's nothing, I'm, it's frustrated over what, you know? It's, it's a blessing. It's a sign, it's a test of his faith of his character, of his mental toughness, that he has to, maybe he's worked the body too hard. And he needs a couple of days off. So, you know, he's, t he's turned a, a negative into a big positive, which is, that's David Tua. half an hour of weights, including uh, a lot of movement, sideways movement, so um, we're right back on track. Stop. Y'all doing a good job, man. Now I'm going to come around for a tip. Watch both ways before you cross the street, man. Here you go, man. Oh, thanks, man. You're the great. Right. Go do yourself a favor and buy yourself a candy or something. Give yourself a round of applause while you have it too. There you go. Very good. All that counts. All that counts. All right. 
That's the man. Yeah. Tour. That's your fight right there, baby. He, that's good. The jab is going to kill this guy. He's not going to be expecting you to come in and jab. Give me a deep breath. Tour. Keep working. I got you. Keep working like you're working. All right? Don't change nothing for me. Keep shooting the jab at him like that. Keep shooting the jab at him. Who's put 30 pound on since he's been here? Oh, yeah. hey? You can put uh, a little bit of weight on. Still down, I don't like you guys enjoying yourselves. <laughs> this is not what it's all about, this is a boxing camp. We've got to be serious. <laughs> a serious operation. <laughs> What do you think about this? Very, uh, this one I actually, when I was in redneck country over the weekend, Mississippi, this was a little number I wore. <laughs> what do you think the rednecks thought of that? Oh, you Camp life can be what you make of it. It's a bit like Groundhog Day. Every day is pretty much the same. We wake up at the same time. We have the same things for breakfast with the same people. We do the same things. We're in the gym at 10 o'clock with the same people. We do the same things. All I got was one, two, three, four, five bits of banana. You like any raisins this one? Oh, it usually raisins. doesn't even have any raisins or banana. No, I don't all want raisins. I don't want raisins. See, you can now it comes out. Uh, if, you guys, if it's too much trouble, I just... No, look, just forget about it, okay? <laughs> we have a lot of fun in our camp. We have a lot of laughter. Oh, is that one of your fingernails? <laughs> we have each other on something horribly. You know, we have... We have a very funny time, and you have to because this is hard work. The only reason he lets me run with them is I've got to protect them from the animals. And I said to him, look, if I'm going to do that, I want a knife, you know? I want to be like Davy Crockett, you know? Because if a mountain lion appears out, well, what am I going to do? You know, but he say, hey, I tell you, he's not going to go for me. He's going to go for the one with the most meat on him. The lions are smart, I tell you. You will see a new David Tua for this fight. He's put probably 10, 12 pound of muscle on. He's worked real hard. The weight is not an issue. This is not a broad cake. Billy made this. Well, if you believe that, then you'll believe anything. Billy made this cake. Look, look at that face. That face doesn't lie. Billy made that cake. I got a long nose. <laughs> yes, it's 41st birthday, so, you know, everybody deserves to have one. And today is Kevin's. Let's get it on. <laughs> So hey, man, you got to bring the phone down here with you because they got somebody down here want to see you, man. I don't know who in the hell this is. They say that you taught him he can come by and uh, talk to David? Uh, no, 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 hold on. Here's David. David, did David say, hold on. Hey, this, this, this black bro, uh, come in, man. Over. Put Marty on, put Marty on. Come down for a second, man. Over. Happy birthday Very nice. Give take, give a take. Hey. man. Thanks, man. Thanks, Mike. There is only one wish in this house. This whole undertaking, this greatest Cinderella story in New Zealand sporting history, was always too big for people to accept and for people to really want to believe that it could happen. There should be more doubters out there. I really encourage you all to be doubters because you can only make David Tool better. <laughs> Oh,
loyalty, integrity, they are big with us. We've just signed a deal recently for a million dollars. We have some small sponsors who paid $5,000 in 1992. These guys are still with us today paying $5,000 and will probably always be with us paying $5,000 because they gave us support, they gave us uh, the start, they were part of it when it was small, now it is their turn to shine. <laughs>
I don't think it really matters what Lennox Lewis does, we're still going to win this fight. To realise your dream, to realise your goal, to realise what you want to do in life, you have to work hard at it. When I said at the, at the beginning of my career that I will fight for the title, that I will be heavyweight champion of the world, not many people believe me. But I'm, I'm here. Well, the nine-week training camp is up and we're off to the Mandalay Bay. We've done our job, we've got them in the best possible condition we can. Thursday we have the weigh-in, Friday's a day off, if you can call it a day off. It's a day off for the tour, man. And Saturday, well, Saturday is D-Day. It's the day when we find out whether all this work that we've put in this year and whether the hunger is there and whether the tour man has the necessary tools like we believe he has to become the next heavyweight champion of the world. Samuelo, what's new, Ole tap in the penanga le nei molo tato fa moi moi. Pap tai tap wai, pap tai talo. Wo o mai le tai mi, ia vi ia le tua le nei me uma. This is my story so far. I thank you all for your support and all your prayers. It's time, and let's get it on.